What is up guys? Frank Macaluso here from Project Car Engine Swap and here's what we're doing today. Shorten the shifter linkage. We've got our selector rod, which I don't even know if that's the right length. It might be, maybe it's not, but this is just mild steel so we can easily cut and weld this to where the exact dimension that we need. This is aluminum. This is the existing one on the six speed um, transmission. We're gonna reuse this because it actually, it does have a slightly different interface on the transmission housing um, than the original um, IX version or XI version. So um, we're gonna end up using this. Thank God we got it. Um, it is broken as you can see. It came like that, basically cut off. So we're just gonna snip this off right here and we're going to basically weld it onto that. Make sure that this guy is gonna be sitting exactly center where it needs to go and uh, this guy will end up probably getting shortened as well to so we're gonna end up doing a lot of welding here, and this is aluminum, this is cast. We're gonna end up TIG welding this. TIG welding is a bit tricky, especially when you're dealing with cast, because cast uh, aluminum is typically very porous, so you, um, you actually kind of lose some of the mass as you heat it up and you try to weld it, it kind of condenses. It's kind of what we're doing is we're popping all those bubbles inside the cast, and it's kind of shrinking and becoming more dense. Um, so we gotta be really careful about how we weld this. Um, I have done it in the past, so it's not that difficult, we definitely need to need to take so you can get the heat into the into the part. So, step one, shifter assembly. Step two, selector arm, and that's it. Take that existing six-speed carrier that was cut off from the previous owner, and straighten it out into uh, an angle that would work well for us, so that we don't have to sand it all down to the right angle. So we're using a bandsaw for that, and uh, and then we'll end up cutting the carrier from the uh, the all-wheel drive version and get them to meet up. We're getting closer. This guy's already mounted on top of the transmission here. It's cut to its space it needs to go. This guy here will end up getting welded to that, and. I might just do a couple tacks just to make sure that it fits right because this actually rotates and I want to make sure that the rotation is going to end up fitting with the location because this guy needs to be as centered inside of that hole as possible for, an, for a, a good shifting position. You can see right there that that guy is way too long. So I got to cut that off and weld a piece because that's where the bushing goes. Before I final test fit, I wanted to make sure that this back end here fits and it definitely is too long. So I need to basically cut it off here, cut this circular end off here, and I'm basically just gonna weld this guy onto that, and it's gonna effectively shorten it because this goes on to the body side uh, bracket, um, the bushing. So I need to make sure that this guy welds right up to there, and I think we're gonna be in good shape. Got it installed. Looks like it's pretty even up there with the sun. Looks like it's back to the drawing board for me. All right, take two. Got them installed. And this guy is sitting right smack in the middle of that hole. Right in the middle of it. It's perfect. Now I just have to get that back piece in for the rear bushing. And this is going to end up getting done pretty quickly. The beauty with TIG, if you can get your hands on a good TIG welder, uh, AC and DC. AC is for um, aluminum and DC is for most steels like stainless steel or mild steel. The good thing about it is that you can stick with the same gas, the same tip, and all you gotta do is replace the filler metal, which is pretty easy and you can go from aluminum to steel in a matter of seconds. So it's pretty handy to do that.
No wonder the welds came out so shitty. It's because I was still in ACE in DC mode. I needed to switch back to AC. I'm replacing the rubber bushings anyway, so I really don't care about ruining them at this point. I'm going to cut this guy on a bandsaw, and the reason I'm going to do that is because, first of all, it's a clean cut, but second of all, you want to cut at the part where the barrel starts to go to a circular diameter. You don't want to cut it right here, and you don't want to cut it right here. You want to cut it basically here right and then again here and then butt those two circular parts together so that when you weld them up it'll be a nice even round weld you don't want to have it an oval match up with a circle it just won't be very pretty looking and uh, and it might not be as strong it's pretty close pretty close to being right in the center of that hole so let's weld it up and give it a shot I get it. It's not going up because of this guy. Let's fix that. Right at the top. That's the problem. Let's see something here. Put this down. Ah. That would explain it, I think. There we go. Ha! Much better. Okay. Now. With the shifter linkage. It's in neutral, so it spins easily. And there are two different ways to turn this around. So let's turn it that way first. And let's. Okay. So you slip this guy on. Slip this guy on. Everything's pretty straight. Good position. Feels good. Everything's pretty solid. I'm very happy. And that is it for shortening the shifter carrier, the selector rod, getting the bushing installed into the body, and testing it out to make sure that all the gears fit and all the gears mesh, and that the position of the, of the shifter knob is desirable for seat position and driving comfort. So we are done with the shifter linkage. I appreciate all the contribution, the likes, the comments, um, anything that you guys have to offer, I always take uh, into account. 
and I adapt to be better, to be uh, more informative, to be more educational, and to tell you exactly what you need to know if you were to ever do a swap just like this. So take it easy and have a good one.